OK, so I'm just getting this uh, recording started and um, there we go. It started now. So uh, welcome everybody to our um, district choice um, program information session for the Nutka Fine Arts um, program. My name is Jesse Bemister. Like I said earlier, I'm the principal of um, Nutka Elementary School and I'm really happy to be here today to um, uh, oh my goodness, it's transcribing as I speak, uh, to, to kind of be going over this information with you and to answer any questions uh, that you might have about the program. So, um, yeah, thanks. Our target audience for this presentation, just <clears throat> our parents who are considering enrolling their children in the fine arts program for the upcoming school year. Um, if you have any questions, we're going to have a question and answer um, period at the end of the presentation. So if you could hold your questions, that would be fantastic. Thanks. So um, <clears throat> before we begin, it's uh, essential to acknowledge that all of us within the Vancouver School District live, work and play on the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and the Tsleil-Waututh people. That's um, definitely something that we do at our school, um, you know, before presentations or assemblies and things like that. We um, always give an Indigenous land acknowledgement here at NICA, as most elementary schools do also. So um, getting into our agenda, uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about um, NITCA Elementary School um, in general. And then we'll talk a little bit about the fine arts program and, um, and then we'll get to the application process. And at the end, we'll have some uh, time for questions. Um, before we start, I would just like to give some introductions. We already met Janice Myers, who I said um, is the director of instruction. So if you have any real <laughs> burning questions that I can't answer, um, then Janice is probably going to be the next person that you'll ask for those questions. Uh, but I'd also like to introduce um, Nicole uh, Harrison, who's our vice principal, um, who's just started. Um, I would also like to introduce uh, beside me, Katie Muzika, who is one of our grade six, seven teachers and she's going to be here to answer some questions at the end that we might have and um, also joining us from uh, from the district is district principal Doug Brock and Doug is the principal who is responsible for registration and I know that um, you know you might have questions um, regarding registration and that information so Doug's here to answer all of those questions <laughs> um, Hi, yeah thank you for being here so okay uh, so far so good uh, so Nitka Elementary School uh, is a great student. We are sorry, great school. Um, we have lovely students and a very dedicated staff. Um, it's a very kind and caring school community. We have approximately 415 students from grades K through seven. Um, we have three programs uh, in our school. We have our mainstream program from K to seven or our um, catchment school um, students. So that's called our classic program. And that makes up a little bit more than half of our school population. Um, along with that, we also have the fine arts program, which is why you're here. And that also is from grades K to seven. Um, this is a district choice program. This makes up about 40% of our um, total school. So it, it does look pretty even. Um, I would say on a day-to-day -day basis. We also have a district program called ELSP, which are, is our um, elementary learning support program, um, which is one class with students grade four to seven. Um, so that's a very small percentage of our school. It's just one class. Um, our uh, school code of conduct, uh, we care um, about ourselves, we care for others, and we care for this place. Um, and here at NITCA, we have a really high expectation for um, social responsibility. Um, our adherence to the code of conduct ensures that we continue to be uh, a caring and inclusive community, um, and that's really important. So. Um, our school plan for this year, we're working on social and emotional learning with all of our students, and that's a goal um, that our staff has committed to. So, um, uh, yeah, that's something that we're doing that's very exciting uh, moving forward as a whole school. Um, speaking about the Nutka Fine Arts Program, um, it's a K-7 um, district choice program, um, and we focus on the four fine arts domains. So. Uh, visual arts, dance, drama, and music. Um, there's an extra emphasis on, on uh, these subject areas. So approximately 30% of the curriculum is dedicated to the four fine arts domains. Um, and in classic, that might look like 20%. Um, <clears throat> 
there is an emphasis on the skill development through the arts. So um, using the arts, we will bolster these learning lessons that kids will receive in, in their classic or catchment schools. But um, here we will use the arts to um, to accomplish some of those things. Um, a bit more time is dedicated to the arts. So that's something that's important um, to note. Um, in fine arts, the teachers focus on skill and core competency development uh, through the arts, but they're, we're still doing that. Um, with, we will spend a lot of time collaborating here. Um, design thinking is an essential component. Uh, students learn to give and receive constructive feedback. Uh, maybe creating a draft or getting feedback on um, some aspect of performance and then go back, they'll redesign and um, try to improve. Uh, ultimately, with the goal of some presentation, perhaps, or, um, you know, piece of, um, you know, art that's going to be displayed, um, uh, which we're working on. Um, sorry, uh, <laughs> this is blowing up a little bit. OK, so I think. Um, Janice, thank you for answering these questions. Like I said, we will take questions at the end. Um, right now, currently, and in, in our grades four to seven class, we have specific elective options. Um, these electives will vary from year to year. Um, some of the past options have been, and this year, let's say, um, will be photography, comic book creation, musical theater, printmaking, um, salsa and hip hop dance or sketch comedy, even uh, probably a bunch of other different things, just depending on um, the passions of staff and who we have working in the building at any given time. But these are just some examples. So I know currently um, there is a fine arts elective right now uh, that's working on comic book creation. There's a fine art elective group that's doing photography. Um, the grades four to seven fine arts students right now are working on musical theater, um, getting a, um, a production of Annie uh, started. So um, these are all sort of some excited thing or exciting things um, that we're doing here. Um, just so that everybody knows, um, I want it to, to kind of be clear that we welcome in the fine arts program all students. Um, so uh, just like your catchment school, we do our best to support students where they are. Um, you know, we want all of our students to um, feel good about their learning and to be happy to come to school. So our classroom teachers, our resource team, our school based team and SSAs all work with students in our classic program and in our fine arts program um, to support our students. So. You guys have anything to add? Does that sound? Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, some of the other electives are, we've offered in the past, and some of them we're offering this term are watercolor painting. Um, we offer clay electives fairly often, um, as we do have a kiln on site. Um, we've offer, also offered site-specific theater, so we have, we're lucky enough to have a, a ravine right near the school, so um, with a, a walking path, so we've done theater kind of in a more natural environment before. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of fun electives to choose from for grade four to seven, and then um, for the primary program, um, they tend to put a lot of emphasis on visual art, dance, and music, um, and they also tend to use some of the natural setting around the school to help enhance that. Mm -hmm. And I should mention um, <clears throat> for parents that currently our um, fine arts electives for intermediate students will happen on Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. So uh, just to give you an idea of, of the time that's spent on that, I suspect as we get more into the Annie production that that will start to become more and more um, as well. So um, which will culminate in um, you know several nights of performances happening in April um, or maybe May, sorry. May. May, yeah. So. Anyhow, uh, yeah, lots of exciting things happening. So next, um, <clears throat> um, fine arts program is, um, you know, it's like I said earlier, it's everybody is welcome. Um, it's ideally suited for students who enjoy collaborating and creating uh, with others, um, are self-motivated. Students who are naturally curious, have an open mindset, um, and are open to new ideas and experiences. This is something, um, you know, I think that the teachers will do is, you know, we're pushing people sometimes um, um, in things that they haven't done before, haven't tried before. So it's really important to have that open mind and um, to say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try some new things and I might not be the best at that, but that's OK, um, you know, because we're, we're kind of switching and we're doing all sorts of different things. So. Um, 
Ideally, also, if somebody is uh, applying, they will demonstrate a passion for the arts and enjoy engaging in arts focused learning and activities um, because we will do that here. So um, so it's important that your child um, enjoys doing those things. Um, otherwise, it might be uh, challenging. Um, <clears throat> our fine arts teachers are a professional, passionate group of specifically trained teachers who are dedicated to learning and teaching through the arts. So. Um, our teachers have been hired for their different areas of expertise. So depending on the year and the teacher, um, your child may spend more time doing um, that particular thing that that teacher is um, uh, has as their passion or as their kind of core group of or, sorry, core area of training. Um, of course, then in, in the intermediate grades, they will have a chance to kind of work with different teachers, not necessarily their classroom teacher um, to be able to do those other areas of arts as well. Anything else to add to that, Katie? Um, yeah, the only thing I'd add to that is that um, just in terms of the current configuration, the primary team tends to be more focused on um, visual art and dance, um, and uh, music is taught by a, a separate teacher throughout the entire school, uh, so and music. Um, and then the intermediate team does tend to put a little bit more of a focus on uh, performing arts. Um, so the kids get a chance to do that just because uh, more of the teachers in intermediate are trained um, for uh, theater. So, yeah. Yeah, OK, awesome. And this is my first full year here, so I'm really looking forward to the um, the Annie performance. I think it's going to be great. So um, and I know that the kids are very excited for that. So. Um, just through COVID, it's been a few years, I think, mm -hmm. since we've been able to um, have some of these kind of showcase um, events that are really key uh, to the fine arts program. So it's really nice that we're going to be able to perform for an audience and have people um, back in the building to be able to um, witness and appreciate uh, what we're working on. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, and this is going to start to move into Doug's domain here. Uh, this is, of course, as you know, a district choice program. And so if you're here with um, questions or curiosity about your um, kindergarten um, age uh, child for, for this year, um, it's important to note, and um, hopefully you'll have that first, you must register at your catchment school. Um, the links um, are all uh, visible on this um, uh, presentation here. Um, but of course, if you go to the Vancouver School Board website, which since you're here, I assume you've all been there, um, you'll be able to access that apply now. You apply to your catchment school um, and the catchment school will contact you because you'll need to doc uh, verify your documents. Um, the choice program registration um, uh, has already started, so January 9th, and it's going to end on February 3rd. At 4 p.m. So these times are really important because we do have a lot of interest. It does tend to be um, <clears throat> quite competitive. I mean, if you're interested in fine arts or anything else, or sorry, French immersion, it's it's kind of the same thing. Um, so it's really important that you make this deadline, uh, February 3rd by 4 p.m. Um, to be considered in that priority grouping. Um, when you do apply, um, you'll uh, choose up to three choice programs or schools. Um, our priority will start with siblings uh, who are already in the program. So um, depending on how many um, kindergarten age siblings we have, that will um, tell us how many spaces we have left. Um, so for example, if I've got um, five siblings of students who are already currently in the, um, in the program, let's just say, and there's one kindergarten class, um, most likely that means we will have 15 spaces left. If we have more than 15 applicants who apply by the February 3rd deadline at 4 p.m., then we will have a draw um, that's going to be held in February um, to see who those first 15 will be. Uh, all applicants will be contacted uh, by email middle of February, um, either for an offer of placement in the program or to let you know that you've been waitlisted for the program. If you've been offered a spot in the program, you'll have up to 48 hours to respond to the email because I know you might have to think or consider, you know, things uh, if you're coming from, you know, maybe a different part of town. So you'll have 48 hours to respond to the email. Um, and if we haven't heard anything, um, then we will move on to the next person in the list. Um, so like I said earlier, the, the first priority would be siblings. <clears throat> and actually that said, if you are here and you're the parent of um, 
of a current NIPCA student, you still must register your child um, at our school um, before January uh, 31st. Um, and to put yourself into this draw just to make sure that you have that spot. So you, you do have to let us know if you're coming back, even if your older child is already at NIPCA. Important to note. Um, so priority uh, number one would be siblings. And then number two, if you chose NITCA Fine Arts as your first choice, um, that's going to be um, the kind of trigger to get you in, um, you know, to make sure that NITCA is your number one choice. Um, if you want more information, and I I'm assume, excuse me, that you've all been there, uh, but you can go check it out again um, and read up some more on that choice program. Um, and then at the end of the presentation, we can, of course, ask um, Doug some more questions if you have any questions uh, specifically related to that registration. Do you have anything to add to that right now, Doug? Yeah, no, that was great, Jesse. Absolutely. Um, just just a couple points that uh, that often come up. Hello, everyone. Um, as uh, Jesse introduced me before, I'm the District Principal Educational Planning and Student Information. And so one of my areas of uh, responsibility is to support uh, schools and families with the uh, registration and enrollment process. Uh, and I've also been um, through my time as principal and vice principal, um, I've always worked with choice programs. So I'm glad, glad you're all here today. Just a couple of uh, extra points that often come up I found with parents. Um, uh, as, exactly as Jesse had said here, um, when you apply online, um, in terms of siblings, so uh, for all choice programs, there is a priority for siblings. Uh, sometimes parents ask, what, you know, what, does a sibling need to be um, enrolled at the same time, as Jesse said. So the, the the sibling needs to be currently enrolled in the in the program for which you're applying to have sibling priority. So for Netca, for example, Fine Arts, your child sibling will be currently enrolled and also would be concurrently enrolled the following year. So those are kind of the two criteria there in terms of siblings. It's also really important that when you um, um, register for your uh, at your your English catchment school, it's going to be online at that uh, apply now um, uh, website that's at the top of the slide here. Uh, there is a prompt where you need to indicate if you have a sibling and you need to enter your sibling's PEN, which stands for provincial education number. If you don't have that, you can't find it. There's a way to access it online. Otherwise, you can contact the school. So every child in a public school in BC has a provincial education number and we use that to verify. It's really vital that you do um, declare so to speak you do note that there that there is a sibling because it's the only way that we're able to able to know that information then verify that for the sibling priority and then as jesse meant jesse mentioned just going down um it mentions their priority um do, 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 uh, as first choice so when you uh, so you you are able to apply to up to three choice schools, um, and that can be any combination of schools. So for example, you could apply just for Nutka Fine Arts, or you could apply for Nutka Fine Arts and a French immersion program, or a Fine Arts, French immersion, and and um, Montessori, or Fine Arts, and two French immersion. So, so any combination of those programs, you can apply for up to three. You don't have to apply for three. Um, it's important to know that um, you, you're prompted for which program slash school is your first, your second, and your third choice, and they are weighted. So your first choice is a higher weight, um, so to speak, than your second and then your third. So for for any given program uh, at a given school, so let's we'll say Nutka Fine Arts. If there were, I'll just throw it. I, I have no idea how many applicants there will be, of course, because the registration is open. But if there were um, 30 applicants, for example, or 35 applicants who um, you know list that as priority one, those will be the applicants that are first considered um through the system and if there is a draw meaning if there are more spaces uh, available than there are uh or sort of more uh, applications i should say than there are spaces available then there is a draw and the draw is done electronically um uh through our through our computer system so that's just a, a few points that sometimes come up as questions and as jesse said happy to answer any questions at the end thanks jesse Great, thank you. Um, thank you for uh, that, Doug. And I'm sure people have questions for you at the end. So um, we are getting close to the end of my slides here. We've got a few more. Um, well, actually, we kind of jumped the gun here because these were <laughs> uh, sort of continuation on um, uh, from from what Doug was talking about. So, uh, or actually, sorry, no, this is a misreading this slide. It's kind of small on my screen. So, um, if you're here and you're not uh, with a kindergarten age student and you're interested in grade one to seven applications, um, our um, application process for the fine arts uh, for the 2023-2024 year is currently underway. Um, so it started in no 
November. So if you haven't already registered, that's fine. Or sorry, applied, I should say, that's fine. Um, th that application for priority window is open until the end of January, January 31st for our first priority group. Um, so, um, and you can find that registration or application form, I should say, on the VSB um, uh, website. Um, it's uh, for, for choice programs, it's there. Um, the completed application forms can be submitted to um, NITCA either in person, where you can drop it off here Monday to Friday between um, 8.30 and 9.30 a.m. Uh, if you called and um, you know made sure that uh, Rosemary's here, I'm sure she would let you drop it off at other times of the day as well, if that was convenient for you. Or you could also email the form to studentrecords um, nitka at vsb.bc.ca. If you have any questions about this um, uh, part of the process, feel free to contact the office as well, and uh, we'll be happy to um, to um, uh, let you know exactly where you are, um, you know, with regards to having that application uh, in or what you need to do to make sure that you get it in by that day. Um, again, if you have a sibling already currently in the program, just like in kindergarten, uh, that person will be given priority um, uh, for the upcoming year. Um, and very similar to the kindergarten program, it's if the student will be in the program next year. So one of those hitches, and I think this might be a uh, a scenario that um, Doug was referring to before, say you have a, a student or a child who's in grade seven this year, and then you have a child who's going to be starting kindergarten uh, in September, then of course that grade seven child now is going to be in grade eight and not in this school next year. So that kindergarten age uh, sibling wouldn't have priority. It'd be the same thing for our program in these other grades as well. The student needs to be here next year as well. Um, our offers for placement will be made after spring break. I want to say last year it was quite late when we did make the offer. So once you've got your application in, um, uh, don't worry, we will contact you when it is the right time. Um, and, you know, either to offer you a spot or to let you know that you've been waitlisted. Um, when we do contact you, you've got 48 hours to accept or decline an offer. Um, the waitlist is held until um, the following June. So everybody that's applying um, right now to start um, in September 2023, um, if you are um, invited to the program, great, yay. Um, but if you're waitlisted, that's great too. You will be held on the waitlist until June 30th, 2024. Um, and if a position, of course, opens up in that time, then we will notify you um, and give you that 48 hours to either accept or decline that position. Um, we will then restart that process again. So let's say you uh, have applied this year, you didn't, um, or your child didn't make it into the program, or um, uh, then they will be kept on the wait list until June 30th, 2024. If you're interested in, in coming back for the next year, it'll be a, a reapplication process um, that will start uh, November, 2023. Um, for the next year. So we don't roll the wait list over longer than a year. We we keep it basically for a year and then we refresh it. So um, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, if you um, need some more information, uh, please take a look at our website. Um, you can always contact the office and ask to speak to um, either uh, Rosemary or myself or Nicole as well. Um, and I'd be happy to, um, you know, to try to answer any questions um, that you might have. I know it's an important decision, so um, uh, yeah, you want to be as informed as possible. Um, you could also email student records at NITCA, um, or sorry, student records NITCA at vsb.bc.ca. All of this information is, of course, available on our website. Um, and um, yeah, so.